by Carrie. Uh, Carrie, Vice President of the Mortgage Family Foundation. For the past 15 years, she and her husband John have worked tirelessly to leverage their foundation's funds, spark innovation, and fuel transformation. Carrie is recognized nationally for her work as a philanthropist, student advocate, and the creator of innovative professional development for teachers. She is a recipient of the Distinguished Francis Weisbart Jacobs Woman of the Year Award from the Mile High United Way and currently serves on the Board of Trustees at the University of Denver, the Denver Museum of Science and Nature, Colorado Mountain College Board of Overse Overseers, and New Jersey Center for Teaching and Learning. She's been publicly recognized for her work at National Jewish Health and Denver Academy. She also serves in an advisory capacity and speaks nationally to education advocacy and technology-focused forums. Carrie graduated summa cum laude from International Academy of Design and Technology, giving her an edge on design innovation. She's an aggressive athlete, finishing nine Ironman competitions. She lives in Colorado and Florida with her husband, John. And some questions uh, uh, to address in her talk. What do you see as the biggest need for modern educators and students today? What is your vision for strategic philanthropy? And we know that every gift matters and that this is the title of a recent book in which you have published. Could you talk a little bit more about this? Carrie. So can I please have the clicker? And while I'm getting the clicker, we've been sitting for an hour and a half. So in the spirit of Iron Man, please stand up. Please wiggle it out a little bit. Shake your booty, stretch, little air, maybe a quad stretch, pull your leg up, and don't leave. <laughs> So I don't know whether to spend, talk really, really, really fast so we can all get out of here and get home to our families or to spend the full 10 minutes allotted for my TED talk, which I've always wanted to do but never been asked. So um, today was so exciting because we got to see agility in action. Allison didn't skip a beat, did she? She was agile, she was beautiful and it worked from, I've never had to give a speech in the dark with lights, and I thought that was pretty darn cool. I can't wait to see that Twitter um, post. Um, Jeff was inspiring about how our students, the students in Douglas County, can think about launching businesses now. And that's a beauty about um, Douglas County. Um, Adrian showed us how speechless he is at the leadership here at Douglas County. And that's why the Mortgage Family Foundation has been one of the largest investors in Douglas County Public School and in the teachers right here in this room since I was in my 20s. Let's just put it that way. For me, this is what great education is about. First, it's about relationships. Um, we are large supporters not only in Douglas County, but in a lot of counties throughout our state throughout the state of Florida, and now recently we've become more nationwide. And this particular young man um, was brought to my attention, and he, his, um, his story is also in my book, if you really wanna read a great read called Every Gift Matters, free plug. Um, but Principal Kelly Loth called me, and she's here in the audience tonight, and she said, you have to meet this nine-year-old. And what he had done is he went to his principal and handed his business card and said, I'd like to have a meeting with you, Principal Loth. I have an idea for my business. Kylan recycled, his, when he was a little boy, his mommy encouraged him to get a pen pal in Africa. And when he, him and Harana um, changed uh, emails and they realized actually how, mu how much similar they were and not different. And, um, but Harana lived in Africa in a very poor, poor village. And Kylan said, mommy, I wanna do something about that. So he started a business. 
and it was called Metals Missions. And he went to his principal and said, I'd like to enroll my entire school to help me with my metal missions. And he recycles scrap metal. Remember, he's eight. But every year, he makes about $200. And what he would do is he would send Hirana a um, Christmas gift. And whatever he had left over, he would send his family either a chicken or a goat through World Vision. And he was just quite the humanitarian. So I had the privilege of meeting um, Kylan. And it just so happened that my dear friend was also going to Africa. So I asked Kylan and his mommy, well, why don't you go to Africa? I think I could sponsor you. So we sent Kylan to Africa. And here's what he came back with. He was ready to change the world because now he was nine. He asked, he went back to Principal Loth and he said, can I have my own assembly? And of course she gave him his own assembly. And at his assembly, he recruited every single child to sign the Difference Maker movement. And they did. And they decided, now her school that she currently works at is about 90% free and reduced. So everybody in this room understands what that means. Um, they did a penny drive. He encouraged every kid to do a penny drive. And within three months, they had raised $891. World Vision matched it, so they learned how to leverage their money. And they now have a well in the, um, in the city that he got to visit. He truly is a difference maker. And I want to ask each of you, how many of you have difference makers in your classroom? And how many of you are willing and have a relationship with somebody else to say, you know what, this kid's onto something. Could you meet with them? Could you mentor them? Or could you help them? And then how many of you are ready to give your nine-year-old their own um, assembly? So that's where we see and understand where education is going. A little about, about me and my husband. This is my husband, John Morgridge. I seem to have a lot of John Morgridges in my life. My father-in-law is John Morgridge, and he took a company called Cisco Systems Public. And that happened um, about the year we got married. So it's been quite a journey because it's not Cisco the food company. It was actually Cisco the tech company. Um, from our journey in the foundation, what happened was we wanted to start giving away money. We wanted to get involved, but honestly, we didn't know how. And almost my very first grant was a failure. It ended up working out for the school. I walked into a school because I wanted to help school because we had um, small children. And that's where you start is normally your children inspire you to give back. Um, I walked in with 10,000 shares of Cisco stock to a school and said, I want to help you, but I don't know how. And we had to learn how to cash the shares and so on. So that's where we started about 18 years ago, maybe 19 years ago. But my point being is that 19 years ago, philanthropy hadn't even entered your classroom. And now it's required. It's the norm. It's how things have changed that rapidly and that quickly. And that's because A, the public school system has made it more conducive. And B, it's more acceptable to be the norm. So Adrian, Adrian was speechless over Liz Fagan. And so were we when we met her. And this is why Liz Fagan, it was so, was so amazing at her time she spent here. And what she did, again, she had that relationship with us, just like Principal Loth has with Kylan. And she came to us and said, I have this rock star teacher you have to meet. And she has a dream, but I don't have courage money. And philanthropy is what we refer to as courage money. We can take risks and we can fail or we can have successes, but we can take that chance. And there's no better place to take that chance than right here in Douglas County. So I went to meet Mary Lisa Harper and she wanted to blow up her classroom and not in that way with a bomb or anything like that. 
she just wanted to try something new and she wanted to try something different and it needed courage money to get her there. So we gave her that courage money. And you know what, to be really honest, we, we were so busy at the time, we didn't even have a chance to come even, even monitor or see how it was going. Yet in two years, this marvelous woman had reconstructed her classroom with furniture. She had re, re, rethunk, rethinked, rethought. <laughs> she had changed the way we think about how her students should act. It had a maker space. The kids had to own their own learning. And if you've had the chance to go into one of the classrooms that she's rethought about and redesigned, it's had a ripple effect on Douglas County. And we couldn't be more prouder. And what happened for us is that when we started being asked, what was your most innovative grant of the year? We always went back to just a $30,000 grant to Mary Lisa Harper. And she became our most innovative grant of the year. And we were really, really proud of that. In the same building, I met this lady. And I don't know if you know Jean, but this is great teaching and this this is a perfect example of why Douglas County is so, you aren't just cutting edge, which is an industry term, you're bleeding edge. Jean, I don't know how many, how many of you know Jean? A few people. So Jean's story is she went to Belize on a, um, on a mission and her friend was a medical doctor or a dentist. So he, handed out toothbrushes. And she said, well, I can hand out toothbrushes. And what she realized is she said, but my gift is teaching. I know how to teach kids how to read. And Jean went back the second year, not with a toothbrush, but with books and with her gift of how she could change the world. Fast forward, I think it's five or 10 years later, um, Jean now has recruited her entire school. They do a drive for the supplies. You can see this was just one picture I took really quick. They do, the parents all get involved. But what's most important is that her second graders have pen pals with second graders in Belize. And they support each other. This one teacher, a second grade teacher whose, whose expertise is in um, literacy is now working with the entire education department in Belize. And they come here once a year to learn what's best practices. They come right here to Douglas County to learn what you are doing as best practices. And they are taking that home to Belize and they're changing the way their education is taught. That's the power of Douglas County. That's the power of saying yes. And that's the power of having superintendents and principals support great teachers just like you. So I wanted to talk a couple of seconds about this guy. How many of you use Khan Academy in your blended learning classrooms? Only a handful? I thought everybody used Sal Khan. So I've just read this amazing book. It's called The Originals. It's by Adam Grant. And if you haven't read it, read it. Because right now, all of you in Douglas County, your originals. Mary Lisa Harper is an original. The way she did her classroom, that is originality. And the panelists have talked about this. How do we embrace originality and not stomp on it? How do we embrace that? Um, Sal Khan single-handedly pretty much changed College Board and the ACTs and the SATs. If he had started out in 09, with the, I'm gonna conquer the world by changing the ACTs and helping kids get into college, none of us would have bought into that, would we? But because he had, he had these, this amazing ladder, and you were talking about it, Jeff, about that education ladder. Sal Khan also had that. In 09, he started with plus minuses. And by the way, he has three degrees from MIT, one from Harvard. When he was at MIT, he was a president of his class. And when he was at Harvard, he was a president of Harvard Business School. He's kind of qualified to teach math, just saying. And so as he got more involved in our education space, because that's what I, 
refer to it as because you have to learn our language, don't you? We have this weird foreign language in our education space. And Sal Khan, as he learned that language, he saw the gaps and the opportunities that he could conquer. So it was so exciting last week when we were with College Board in New York to hear that over in the first year, over one million students now have equal access and equal opportunity to taking the ACTs. But what does that mean? That means that our kids are now taking high stakes tests with help before we never used to help them. So we're now helping our kids with ACTs. We're helping them get into college. Why is college so important? Because right now that's what the jobs require. But we don't reverse engineer what we want from our kids. And right now, you guys are so critical, you teachers in the audience are so critical to how us philanthropists are thinking about reverse engineering from the job to college to K-12 to pre-K. And it goes in that order. So at our foundation, we started this little thing called Share for Nation. Ten years ago, we invested in interactive whiteboards. Douglas County actually had ten. I bet you now almost every single classroom is equipped with an interactive whiteboard. How many of you have interactive whiteboards? Some hands. How many of you are paying attention? <laughs> How many of you have one-to-one -one laptops and just skipped over the whiteboards and went straight to one-to-ones? So see, that, that's what happened for us was that ladder. We started with interactive whiteboards and we actually started here in Douglas County. And then when we went to KIPP public schools or KIPP charter schools to roll it out nationwide, you know what they didn't want? They didn't want an interactive whiteboard. Technology had moved on and we were like experts. We had uh, partnerships with SMART, we had partnerships with Promethean and our teachers didn't want an interactive whiteboard anymore. They wanted one-to-ones. So we had to change with them, and we did change with them. And so we grew from that. But what we also had to do was we had to embrace, if we gave teachers technology, we had to spend the time to train them. So we started off um, just teaching our very first Share Fair Nation eight years ago. How many of you have been to a Share Fair Nation? Yay! I'm winning. I'm winning. Um, Remember the good old days when we just taught about how to turn on an interactive whiteboard? <laughs> but now, and then we went to differentiated instruction, which you're talking about is the latter. And now we're going to personalize learning because what we're trying to do is we're trying to stay one step ahead of our teachers so that we can give you the best instruction just like Douglas County is doing here. Douglas County professional development is the top professional development in the country. You can't get it anywhere else. You're bleeding edge. So I all want to give you a pat on the back for thanking you for being an original, for thank you for being a great teacher, for embracing the changes. We are throwing, you're being thrown so much crap. You're being thrown standardized testing. You're being thrown creativity and query based, differentiated learning. It's now up to us to say, how can we support you in the best possible way? And so I just want to end with a huge thank you and a shout out to all of our teachers, whether you're at Adams 12, whether you're at Douglas County, whether you're in the state of Colorado, or whether you're in our nation, if we can all learn how to collaborate with each other and teach each other a little bit, we will win to get our kids, not through pre-K, not just through college, but all the way into a great career that they're happy with. By the way, I tweet, it's up there. Not afraid of it. And I just want you to know that at 49 years Adrian. old, you can learn Twitter. It's going to get Adrian on there. Um, Carrie, that was so amazing. Every, every, every question that was popping on my screen, as if you anticipated, it would pop on my screen and then you would answer it a second later and it would disappear uh, from my screen as you did that. Um,